Welcome to part four of the AWS Cloud Resume Challenge. Today, we will be building out the Lambda function that will increase our viewer counter and also implementing the JavaScript into our website so that that viewer counter is displayed. So let's look at the Cloud Resume Challenge here real quick. So, you know, we have completed the database part of our challenge where we launched DynamoDB. If you haven't, please check out last three parts. We have covered them until the database. So what we are building today is the API and JavaScript. We'll be using Python as a programming language for the API, and we'll be using JavaScript in our front-end website to display the viewer counter, which we'll be getting from the DynamoDB table. So just to reiterate over the last parts, I messed up the audio on the last part where I already had part four covered with Lambda and JavaScript. So today I'll be using my production AWS Cloud Resume Challenge. I know we created a test environment in the last parts. So just ignore the naming um, from the last parts, uh, but the concepts are the same. So I have a DynamoDB table here called resume-challenge, right? And I have a Lambda function. So this is where we left off in the last part. So I have a D Lambda function that's using Borrow3 right? And I'll go over the code here. So you can see I'm doing two imports on the top. So that's how imports work in Python. Um, the libraries or modules you want to use, you import them on the top, right? So Borrow3 is the library you use to interact with AWS services. In our case, we are interacting with the DynamoDB resource here, as you can see on line third, right? So what we are doing is we are calling this table, the resume-challenge, as we saw on the AWS console on the other screen, right? So I am calling the resume-challenge table. And what we are doing is we are getting an item with an ID zero. If I go here and look at this table. So if I click on explore table items, you can see the ID that is zero has a property called views with the number of views my production website has been viewed, right? So that's what I'm calling. So I'm getting an item where the key ID is zero. So that's what this code does. And then I am printing that as views. So what I'm doing here is just getting the views from the table right here. So 23,469 and printing them here. But I'm also adding an additional value uh, at line 10. Why I'm doing that? Because I want whenever someone visits my website, it increases the viewer count by one because you know we had an increase in a user. So that's why we are doing plus one here, right? And at the end, what I'm doing is I'm also uh, updating with the table dot put item. So I'm updating my DynamoDB table with table dot put item where ID is zero and views is equal to the new value of views, which is which will always be plus one of whatever we got here. So what happens is whenever I call this function, it'll get this value, so two, four, six, nine. So two, three, four, six, nine, it'll add one, which will be two, three, four, seven, zero, and then update my DynamoDB table record two. So all of that is happening in one Lambda function. I know people have sometimes have set up two Lambda functions. So one is to get the count and then the other one is to update the count. I just did it in one Lambda function, just my preference, right? And we also have a configuration setting where we have function URL enabled and I have allowed any origin to call this Lambda function. So we can either test it here. So I've saved this code, right? We can either test it through the UI or I can just show you that if I curl this URL, which is the URL of the Lambda function in my terminal here, you'll see that it'll get the count and you can also see it returned 470, whereas we saw 469, but if I refresh, you'll see it has added that one additional count. So this is how it'll work, right? And if I keep curling it, you know, the count will keep increasing. So our Lambda function is ready. It is deployed, right? In your case, 
if, if you have written this code, make sure you hit the deploy button, right? Um, only then the Lambda function is live. And I, I recommend to specify the origin to be your URL of the website. Um, and don't allow anyone to just curl your Lambda function, right? That covers our API part. Now, moving on to the JavaScript bit, I'll quickly write some code in JavaScript here. Okay, so here's the JavaScript code. What I'm doing is I am creating a variable here called counter, which would select this element in my HTML file, which is the index.html. And just to recap, if you don't have an index.js, right? So I do have an index.js because I'm using some JavaScript for my website. If you don't have JavaScript file, what you would have to do is just create index.js in the root of your website folder and go into your index.html and create a script tag uh, within the body like this, where you have linked your index.js in your index.html. So that way your index.html knows which file to look for uh, when it's running that JavaScript bit of code, right? So after you have done that, go to your index.js. You can ignore all of the code that I have on top. Just focus on the Lambda function um, trigger that I have created here. So as I was saying, we have a variable here that does document.querySelector, which means it's selecting this element from the index.html file. And then what I'm doing is I have created this function called update counter, which is doing a fetch request to the URL that our Lambda function had. So you saw how in my uh, command line, I did a curl request. So pretty similar to that, it's fetching that URL and then storing it as a variable called data. So whatever the response it gets, it stores that in a variable called data. So what happens next is it updates the counter dash number so it updates the counter dash number element in index.html to say views colon and whatever the data was returned by this fetch request. I know it can be confusing. So what we are doing is we are calling this Lambda function URL. We are getting a response and then we are displaying on our index.html where the element is called counter dash number to say that views is whatever the data is. So data will be 23,000 something, right? So it will say views 23,000 something. So let's go back to our index.html and start a live server in my browser here. So you can see I have my website running. I would like the views to be here, uh, right underneath the blog on the left-hand side. So let's do that. So coming back to my index.html, if I go up right here, so you can see this is where the blog element is. So if I type in, okay. So I created a div with class counter dash number. And you might be asking why counter dash number? Remember our index.js is updating an element called this. So you have to make sure the name is same. And then it is a nav item, right? So I've copied these CSS classes from the other menu items so that it looks exactly the same, right? And then I've also displayed a message saying couldn't read views, just in case our index.js is not able to fetch this Lambda function for some reason or other. So let's save this and see if our website is updated. Okay, so you can see how there is a new item here, it says views 23,477. So if I refresh, you know, it'll update by one, which is exactly the functionality we needed to display viewer counter and you can make it in the footer you can have it on the nav bar it's totally up to you just remember the name that you gave uh, the query selector here in your index.js so whatever this name is make sure you use that same name in your index.html so i'll show you how i use it on my personal website so this is my personal production website right now as you can see, and then you can see in the footer, I have views. And this is 
exactly from the same Lambda function. And yeah, so I think that covers up to point 10 of the AWS Cloud Resume Challenge. We went over the API, we went over the Python code we wrote for our Lambda function. We also went over number seven, which was the JavaScript code. And I hope you're liking this series. So in the next ones, we'll cover tests, uh, infrastructure as code, source control, CICD for the backend and CICD for the front end. And that will complete our challenge. I hope you really like this series. Please uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit a like. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.